before your meeting in the cemetery. I don't, I don't have, have to tell, tell you, you anything. 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 Is that our music? I'm sorry, yeah. I'll turn that down. <coughs> oh, it's nice. You have everything from your phone. It's nice. Yeah, gotta have everything in a touch. Oh, we're here. Nice. Shush. <laughs> Cousin of the train. Cousin of the train guy. Every time he's down by the, where is it? In, uh... Any train station, it's like, as um, soon as I get on, like, he could ring, suddenly here's the train. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... All you guys are uh, fantastic entrepreneurs, um, and uh, I'm glad you all came. This is sort of our roundtable. It's a networking opportunity. Uh, I'd like to just, uh, I guess the topic really is, is, is share a little bit about, you know, how you guys maybe, your journey, you work together. I mean, I think we, we started uh, the idea of a mental health for entrepreneurs, especially in this restaurant business. <laughs> okay, look at what it did to his hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're crying and walking. Mental, <laughs> mental health in the restaurant industry is generally found at the bottom of a bottle some, somewhere. <laughs> in the worm. Yeah, in the worm. So, um, again, we have Laura Depko um, from Depko. Cognitive therapy. That's a mouthful for me to say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jen here here LLC uh, and pop-up market social media marketing and I also know you do restaurant tour, uh, coverage too a little bit yes. right <laughs> and then um, Lauren last name because of Borowski Borowski and uh, Child's Play Challenge Courses yeah. Not For Children. Uh, Jason, last name again? Reef. 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 Uh, managing partner at One Willow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right? Uh, Chris Johnson. Johnson, yeah. founder of Grace Reef. For Life. Right. And Mark Slotnick, partner of Black King Creative Partners. So um, we're all part of a different industries. We're all different, but there's definitely always a way for us to be synergistic. And I hate that buzzword. Um, but it's true. So whether it's you know communicating via mental health, holding an event uh, at sure. a location, mm -hmm. holding an event at a location and making people climb trees or whatever you're going to build for us, <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, and and bringing young entrepreneurs to the table to see to meet you and see this. There's always some synergy here. So um, I guess uh, who wants to start off a little bit? Ask a question. Go for it, Jen. Oh, I was going to say how. Um some of our businesses can work together. So to me, I'm looking at the table and I say, this is a bunch of people that Eric picked, small businesses, random, right? But I spoke to you before about how, uh, mindfulness and that, how that ties in with my business. And you work with children as well. Um, I'm coordinating an event with One Willow on December 2nd to have a pop-up market here, a sip and shop. Um, with Black Ink Creative Partners, I was involved in uh, the social media aspect, and Chris and I do something very sim similar. He puts on pop-ups for young entrepreneurs, and I put them on for, well, other small businesses. But we all have something in common besides being small businesses. There's all a way for us to work together. We just have to figure out how to how to get in there. Well, that was going to be. It all was, this all happened through his mind and his efforts. Okay. <laughs> and that's great because now you have some ties that you can potentially go and expand your business and meet mm -hmm. new people. Project. To Project. plug, to plug our yeah. business, but do venues that bring people together. And then, you know, Eric's and my business is not the only one on the road. It's the best one, but it's not <laughs> the only one. Mm -hmm. But do you find that these are good avenues to meet, or do you go to them and say, this sucks, because it was all for, you know, I'm in this business and there's only restaurant people, so it's a waste of my time. Um, how do you feel to get your word and to mm -hmm. interact? What's the best ways that you have seen in the past and then for the future? I think just by talking to people, right? You can find some kind of common ground and how you'll be able to work together that way. Um, so not just at a small event like this, like this is micro networking, no. can we say it like that? Um, 
and sometimes in a more for me intimidating setting where there's a room full of people you could walk through hi how are you if there's no name badges sometimes it's like i don't really know what you do so i'm going to keep walking to the next person until i find somebody i meet that i know so it's right. nice in this small way to get to know each other and figure out how we could work yeah, I'd say for my purposes in the in the food service industry is like I'm always in some way or another networking, right? Everyone has some tie to enjoying restaurants. There, very seldom do you find anyone who's never dined out. Uh, so everyone has their you know their opinions, their their desires, their uh, personal tastes and preferences, and you know I'm always out there trying to market my restaurant in some fashion or another. And meeting people from any other walk of life and any other business is is all the same to me. You know my restaurant's mm -hmm. open to everyone, all the same. So yeah, I, I would say for for me, um, really, you never know how you may need to, even if you don't need someone right now you know you meeting and you being able to network learn about their path um there's always a time where maybe it makes sense maybe a partnership could, could work you know so um i look at partnerships you know that um maybe i'm like oh you know what this person this may not make sense at this moment and then at the time it's like you know what hey i remember i met this person and you know now it, it there's a business relationship that I could come or even more so i always look at networking like that i love meeting people you know in the business mm -hmm. i'm in um it's really about like youth youth empowerment so i think there's something to take away from every industry um that you know so I, that's how i look at networking events no i agree i don't think there's ever been an event that i've been to where it was a waste of time i mean you always bring you always get something out of everything you go to either you get an idea or you meet somebody that maybe has a resource that you can use or i mean in my business with child's play challenge courses I mean, I have so many different um, clients that I can meet. I mean, people with children for birthday parties or corporate team building, or maybe it's just getting advice from somebody else about how they market their business or, you know, what I could do better. Or um, I, I was, I, simple things like I was talking to other folks just at the um, procurement con that I went to, and we were looking at photos and I have my photo set to live photo and I was showing somebody and I was like, look, if you put your live photos together, you can make an Instagram reel and it looks like a little movie. And they were like, we were, we were just talking about photos and phones. It wasn't even that we were talking about our businesses at that mm -hmm. point. So you, there's always so many great ideas that you can share with people and things that you can take away. So uh, yeah, networking is never a waste of time. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -mm. I think you have to also, if you're not, if you don't think that you're very good with people, if you're not a people person, and that has to go out by the wayside. For Either sure. That or, yeah. you know, or, or find a partner who is. You know, Eric and I both can really knock it out of the park when it, you know, 300 people, we can just go out there and meet and greet and bring our business out to the uh, forefront, but also to see who's out there. So you have to be ready to have people just turn around and like walk away. <laughs> You just say, okay, they're jerks, they're assholes, and move on to the next person. And <laughs> Eric, you know, Eric's line was, somebody walked up to somebody tall, he goes, God, you're tall, you must be somebody important. <laughs> that was the icebreaker. And we now work with the guy, you know, he's a ticket person, so you know, we're looking to expand his business, and he's going to help us as well. So, as you say, you've got to be in it to win it. Type of thing. And I think, and you, too, yeah. you know, for people who, who might not necessarily be people person or have some social anxiety. Um, I think going into an event with the goal of just like taking away one thing, whether that's yeah, one yeah, person's yeah. contact information or one really good idea, um, then you're not as um, stressed about thinking about the whole thing if it's a bigger event, mm -hmm. um, which then you, you, know, you might kind of withdraw into yourself you'll have your eyes open and looking for that one opportunity. And when you're doing that, maybe five opportunities come your way. For sure. Yeah. It's, a, it's yeah. a mindset too as well, right? It's, it's an energy and you know, it's kind of, like I say from, from my perspective, I'm always engaging uh, with guests, uh, people who come into the restaurant, but in that same likeness, that's why I say I'm always networking my business in some way, shape or form, inviting people in just to come and see what we've done here. Um, so yeah, I think it's a lot of it's just a mindset to try and you know get yourself to that place where you're receptive to other people and and so on and so forth. Yeah, and what you said actually made me think because some, even just because you're a small business owner doesn't mean that maybe you're comfortable networking and talking to other people. So maybe bring somebody with you. I mean, my husband and I own the business together, 
and he does not like the spotlight. He, he just, no. And I could never do what he does, though. He gets up in front of groups of adults and children and leads amazing programs, and that's something I, I, that's not my strong suit. But this is, I mean, talking to people and talking about our business and networking is something that I enjoy doing. But maybe you have a partner in your business or somebody that, even somebody that maybe works for you part-time, maybe they're a people person and they love to talk, bring them along with you. You know, maybe they'll help you break out of your shell a little bit. And maybe my husband will be on one of these one day. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll get Matt to do this one day. That's, that's our... That's we'll our get Matt to do it. <laughs> we'll get we'll Matt, Matt to, to do it. I almost had him here today. Almost. <laughs> it was close. Next time. We'll get him. Actually, what we'll do is we'll end up setting up a course and we'll have an interview show where everybody has to run the course to be oh allowed to be interviewed. Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, while they're running the course. Oh, while they're running the course, you got to interview them. Oh, so many opportunities. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now we're really going to get to know people. I know. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So, um, you know, from a networking perspective, uh, we have um, always there's, the again, the people person. You have to break out of your shell in some way or bring somebody with you. Um, But that's not always possible. Right? That's just not always possible. Sometimes you are a one-man band. Yeah. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that we need to seek opportunities, at least one-on-one, so that we're in that comfortable space to have a conversation. You know, so it's, it's make it a point to go to the park and talk to one person. You know what I mean? And, and just start to break out of your shell. Just have a conversation so that you can then apply that to going to a meetup where you can meet up with one person, just talk to one person. Um, Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, not everybody, and and then on top of that, not everybody can have this great energy between two people. There's people Mm -hmm. who look at me and go, fuck him. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm not talking to that guy, but he'll talk to Mark. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't like, because you know, the judge the book by its cover thing, or they just hear me speak, or the fact that he has hair. (laughs) <laughs> or you know what's been great too even the virtual networking oh, yeah. you know that's another way to ease into it where maybe you're in the comfort of your house and I don't know that might be even a more comfortable way to do something and they have the breakout rooms that you go into virtually I found that those can be it's a different dynamic right it's a different vibe from, from a psychological standpoint yeah. I know my son was back in the interviewing process he got a job and um when he was having an interview, I said, Michael, because he was getting nervous, I said, you're interviewing them mm-hmm. as much as you're in, they're That's interviewing yeah, you. Because yeah. sure. you may go, yeah. and the person who's interviewing you, who are the eyes and the mind of this company, is a complete fucking idiot. Yeah. You may say to yourself, I don't want to work for this company. <laughs> yeah. So you can Switching kind of, perspective. so yeah, you yeah. can, you, know, you definitely want the job, but it kind of takes the edge off. So if you're going to mm-hmm. a procurement con or any other type of networking and you're nervous about meeting people and what am I going to say and people don't, won't like me or I just don't have the gift of the gab well think that the other person may be even worse off and that you're going to take the mm-hmm. pressure off of them and start talking so there are definitely ways that you can so try to change it up one of the ways we came to be here is Eric and I had a conversation and said uh, alright Jen where, where do you think we can have this interview and I said well how about one will oh because I'm comfortable there. And that was my oh, yeah, <laughs> that was true. my whole yeah. thing. I was like, I feel very comfortable here. This is like my my place that I, I come to. I'm here for dinner quite often or for lunch. Well they quite promised often. us free food, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, f- food will do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I have to say that I'm a little bit guilty of I'm one of those people who doesn't normally like this networking with other small businesses in this situation is not my forte. If I'm in a craft market or if I'm in a classroom, I have no problem with that. Even in the, but here in a restaurant setting, I'm a little bit more comfortable. And uh, here at One Will, oh, I was the most comfortable. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit. Well, that makes biased. me happy to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but, but speaking of comfort, and I think to um, Chris has a, a, a really tight finger on the pulse of you know developing those skills because you work with the youth, and I think that's a big thing for all of us. A lot of us, there's there's none of that. There was no. I don't know any skill building until you're like in college where yeah, they right. make you take speech class, right. and that's the only one you take that helps you build networking and confidence skills. And it's like one semester. 
Right. You know, so I think it starts really at that level, that, that, at that youth level for at least the next generation. But we can still take those same skills, those same mm -hmm. learning, you know, models and apply them today. Um, so I don't know if you want to speak to something about that. Yeah, I'll say, I mean, it's definitely all about exposure. You know, I mean, like, I, j j just like you said, when I was in school, I don't remember um, an opportunity where you get that, where you're meeting like these business owners and you're networking. So networking was all new. When I when I first started a business and they're like, oh, it goes to a networking event. Like, what am I going to talk about, right? But you know, once you get exposed to it, and the earlier you can get exposed to it, the more comfortable you get. You know, so it's understanding your own strengths and then being able to work on those. And then you know, for youth, you know, create those experiences at a younger age so you get exposure and you're more comfortable. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, any more you want to add to that? Anything? No, I think. Okay. We're good. So I'm putting you all on the spot. Okay. So we we're gonna set up a biz talk live session here. We'll talk more. I'll get your email address. Okay. Let's do it. With we're food. gonna set a biz up yes, talk with session food. up I'm, with the kids. I'm, I'm, the all, I'm all in. I'm all in. People in. We're gonna figure out how to have you at Absolutely. one of the biz cons or the procurement cons in a full scale oh, yeah. event. Mm -hmm. You're speaking at a biz talk and you're gonna to continue to be part of our social media crew. All right. And Mark, you just gotta keep listening to my crazy shit. <laughs> I'm keeping you out of jail. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Sounds for good. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it very much, guys. Oh,